So let's talk about a, a regulatory use case. This is a problem, you know, U.S. regulators, amongst others, have where they're trying to look at, you know, all the activity around a drug approval process. And, you know, one of the, you know, many problems they have is that they have many different siloed data sources that they're trying to stitch together to tell the story. Um, for example, um, you know, within the United States, they have the Orange Book, which has patent data. They have uh, clinicaltrials.gov, which has clinical trial data. They have a data source called FAIRS that helps um, adverse event data. And then they have, um, you know, drug approval letters that have, you know, other, all sorts of data that's unstructured about a, a particular drug product. And that data has um, different formats. It may refer to um, different concepts using uh, the same concept using different terms. So let's take a look at how we can build a knowledge graph from these different sources. <clears throat> so this is a knowledge graph that we've built. It's combining the data from um, you know, several of those sources. You can see each source is sort of has a different color within the knowledge graph. Um, you know, over here in, in, in blue, we have some clinical trial data. I'll just zoom out a little bit and zoom back in so we can see it better. Um, we have some information that's um, about our adverse events that's over here on the right. And we have this idea of a canonical product that's um, linking up uh, all of these different sources. And the first thing that we'll notice, right, and I'll zoom in again so we can, can see this a little bit better, is that each one of the sources, right, has a slightly different way of referring to what we consider a canonical product. Um, our clinical trials is referring to an intervention um, that um, you know, is being used. Our adverse event record refers to a drug that was used to treat a patient. And our, you know, sort of our orange book and our source, right, that has um, patent information refers to just a product record. So we're going to, you know, obviously tie these two things together by a canonical product. But let's talk about how we built this knowledge graph. And then we'll talk about how we tied it together and actually built this knowledge graph in a little bit more detail. So um, we have this concept of, of a graph mart. And... A graph mart is really just the recipe for creating a, a connected knowledge graph where each one of the different layers is really instructions for um, either loading data from a particular data source into the in-memory um, graph database that sort of sits behind ANZO. Or there are additional steps, which we call blending. Think of that as, you know, instructions, again, in using Sparkle that are doing data transformation, um, data cleansing, data harmonization between those sources. And that's exactly what we have here. Um, our first seven or eight steps here are just loading um, each one of these different sources from, you know, it's different file formats. Some of these are in CSV, some of them are in JSON, some of them are in a database, some of them are in structured data sources. And then we have um, blend steps that are going to be uh, defining some of the instructions for how we're going to combine these sources together um, you know, into a connected knowledge graph. And I'll just click on one of them briefly so we can look at it. It's going to be a query. Again, this everything is being done within the power of the graph where we're going to have an in-memory step here where we're going to do data transformation based on this particular Sparkle query. Now, um, obviously, you know, it, it's a lot of power because we can sort of transform the data in that in-memory layer. But there's actually you know, some additional um, level of intelligence that we have, and that's leveraging some of the metadata you can see over here on the right about our sources. Um, so you can see, you know, for example, if we click on a particular object, it'll give you some metadata about the different properties over here on the right. And we can leverage um, that metadata to actually, you can see, we can click on find connections here, um, do an advanced find. You can actually leverage that to actually um, generate some of the steps that will do the data tra transformation and linking between our different sources and we'll use, um, you know, sort of that metadata to sort of suggest where connections may exist between some of our siloed sources. 
So that's how we can power, right? The automation of some of those um, queries that will connect our different sources together. So once you've, you've, you know, you've built the connected knowledge graph, there's you know, a couple of different ways that you can actually expose that knowledge graph. And one of them we're gonna talk about right here is actually using uh, what we call Anzal high res, which is the native um, BI or access layer uh, for the Anzal platform, where you can actually build you know, different visualizations directly on top of the knowledge graph that query um, you know, and expose that knowledge graph in, in a variety of different ways. And you know, this is important, right? Because we often use Anzo Higher Res not just to build you know, specific visualizations, but to actually find areas in the knowledge graph or you know, sort of um, you need to add an additional harmonization and transformation step that we can add as an additional in-memory layer, which we can do quite quickly um, using the graph mark. So you know, that sort of concludes the demo of how we built um, this connected um, you know, knowledge graph for a regulatory use case.